Bonjour, welcome to another TourDeFranceTips.com video. Um, so today we're going to be talking about last minute etap preparations. Um, this is for etap 11, um, either of the etaps. If you're watching this video in the future, this is applicable to your etap as well. Um, all these things basically apply. First up, I want to talk about medical certificate. These things are really, really important. The French are really strict about this. Um, make sure your doctor has signed this. He stamped it as well. It should have his address, his practitioner number. Any and um, all information you can get on here um, is good. Uh, the more information, the better. Make a copy of it, take a photocopy, or stick it in Dropbox and sync it up with your iPhone or your Android phone or laptop or whatever. So if you lose that, you've got another electronic copy. Next up, don't forget to take compression stuff. So I'll put a couple of um, links in the post to recovery stuff, um, products. So all the products here I talk about, I'll put links in, uh, but also to um, a video for um, recovering from the attack properly. These Swift Wick socks, I can't recommend them highly enough. I use them myself. They are awesome, not just for um, long races or a ride like the tap, um, but also for the airplane. They're good because um, they're quite um, they're quite dense and they've got a really good compression effect. So they promote healthy blood flow from your legs, which is important on a plane. Um, likewise, get some two times use stuff. Um, I've got these on because I've just been running for for training um, for the tap. Also good for on the plane and for the day after, get these on your legs and that night as well um, so you can wake up and you don't feel absolutely ragged. Um, as well as um, the compression stuff, um, maybe think about taking a, a foam roller or something like that, not, obviously not this big, probably half the size and, and a bit bigger, this is just a pool noodle, but something like this will be awesome for helping you recover, you can do the legs. There's a, I'll put a link in this post to um, a video, another video I did on how to use this properly. Um, consider taking a baseball or a tennis, two tennis balls in a sock um, or a golf ball for to aid your recovery. Again, you can get into your legs, you can get into your glutes, um, whatever else is, or your calves and your quads. Um, so these are, these are great for recovering from something like the tap. Um, camera. For a lot of you watching, this is going to be the trip of a lifetime, um, and even if you've done it before or you're going to do it again, take a camera. Um, I can't recommend it, taking one highly enough. Um, you know, you might have a camera on your phone, on your iPhone or whatever, but having something like this, you can easily just press one button and snap a photo is really good. Um, I don't mind stopping to take photos if I see someone really bent over and, and, and cramping or, or, or worse, um, take a photo for the website. but. Um, if you're with your friends or, or whatever, or you see some great scenery, or you just want to get happy snaps, take something like that, and um, yeah, feel free to send them in. I'll put them up on the on a, a tap trip report or um, trip report for you guys. Tools. Now, um, you only really need a simple toolkit, and definitely take spares. You need to be self-sufficient. The sag there is a sag wagon for the tap, but it's hours hours behind. Um, so. It's really meant for those who are just absolutely struggling or haven't prepared properly or who are sick or whatever. So make sure you're self-sufficient. Just take a small toolkit and one or two spares. If you're with friends, you probably only need one spare each because I don't think you're all flat. Um, worst case, if you roll into town, there'll be a bike shop. You can get some more spares if you need them. Uh, this, is, this next point is mainly for the people doing the Tap Alps. You're going into the High Alps, the Glibia especially. I think it's 2,600 metres. Um, it's a long way up. It could be very, very cold. It could be windy. Um, might even be snowing. Uh, the descent from the Glibia down into Bourgoisin I think is about 45 k's and it's very fast and very very steep particularly from um, I think it's the Glendor down through La Grave into Bourgoisin it's basically straight down and super super fast. Um, don't want to get you don't want to get a cold and you don't want to get cold and get sick so what I recommend is something like a, a craft base layer. These are awesome they're only 25 um, Australian dollars on Wiggle or Chain Reaction um, good when you're going up the hill, just unzip and let all the, um, they wick the moisture away and keep you nice and cool. And then when you're going back down the mountain, they'll keep you warm. Likewise, not in this colour, this is Melbourne winter riding colour. Um, something like this craft top, obviously just plastic. And the main thing is it's just, I mean this is a visibility vest, but it's also a windbreaker. So um, most people in Europe, when they're doing big climbs, they'll take a really lightweight plastic full sleeve or vest up the climb because when you come back down um, you can get very cold. Um, coming off the Vontu in 2009 I rolled back into bed one and I was absolutely freezing. I couldn't stop shivering for about an hour afterwards so 
that packs up really small. Um, there's a link, there'll be a link in this post to that the video's in to uh, all the wiggle and chain reaction win stuff. So definitely get something like that if you haven't already got one. Uh, and on that, if you're going to do, well, it doesn't matter if you're doing a uh, tap alps or a tap squad, take a rain, a rain jacket and booties. Um, for me, if it's snowing and really horrible, I'm not going to bother doing it. I know it's a long way to go, but, um, you know, 109 kilometers in the high alps in snow, not really, not really keen on it. So, but if you're dead set on doing it, no matter what the weather, definitely take a rain jacket and booties. Next thing is eating. Now, most of you, or probably most of you have your eating sorted out. Uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot on whether there'll be enough feed stations. Last year for the Tourmalet, there were. I think there was three feed stations. They had lots of food, um, oranges, um, sweet cakes, um, bananas, I think from memory, lots and lots of gels, um, and lots of water. So, but the year before for the Vontu um, Etap, there were no feed stations for about 100 and, I think it was about 165 k's until the base of the Vontu in bed one. So, you know, if you didn't have food, um, you're in big trouble. So, personally, I use SIS gels. They're isotonic, so they're not gluggy. They go straight down. You don't need water. Um, they're easier to get down than something like a hammer gel. Um, the hammer gels are really, really good as well. Um, so, for me, before I before I start the tap, I'll be having their, their fat burner gel, just to um, metabolize fat stores and really release some, <clears throat> some energy for the ride. Uh, during the ride, I'll have Go Gels. They're just their standard gel. And then they've got the Smart Gel with a lot of caffeine, so probably before before the Glibia and before the Optoids, I'll have one of those. Um, otherwise, you can get something like a Cliff Shot Block. These are good, or, you know, same thing as having jelly beans, but this is just what I use. Um, and for normal eating, Cliff Luna Bars, good because they've got protein and also fat, or just a standard Cliff Bar. So probably I'll take a big hand, probably mostly gels, and then if I get really, really hungry, I'll stop at a feed station um, and get bananas or whatever else. Uh, worst case, you can stop in town, and in one of the towns you go through and get a croissant or stop and get a coffee um, if you want, if you really need a proper food. So yeah, I hope this has helped you with your last minute tap planning um, and, and getting ready to go on your trip. You should, by now, have done some training. Um, if not, it's not too late. You can do some running and some squats and stuff like that, lose some weight. Um, it's probably too late to get a lot of base kilometers. We've covered medical certificate. That's really, really important. Do not forget that. I haven't done mine yet, so I better get that sorted next week. Um, eating on the tap. Um, most of you will know when you need to eat. Um, just make sure you eat. Um, before you really need to and hydrate. Um, don't drink too much water, you need sodium as well. Um, and what else have we got? We've got the wind, it's important to take wind protection. Um, if it's really hot, you'll probably be okay. The central massive etap, um, etap Iswa, you'll probably be okay with our windbreaker unless it's really, really windy out of the out of the north, I think is a really cold wind, the, the maestral wind, or the mistral wind. Um, otherwise, I think from, from what I can tell, the central massive um, etap or etap Iswa is quite through a lot of forest and stuff, so hopefully it won't be too cold. Um, and yeah, for etap alps, if it's not really cold and it's, it's quite warm, you probably won't, won't need a windbreaker, just maybe a base layer might be a good idea. Um, check out the post for there's a, there's a packing list, so um, give you some ideas. I hope um, most of you will be okay with packing list, obviously, but this has got some stuff you might not have thought about, and also there's a video to. Um, to show you how to recover using the